Annette Maria Antonsen. That's me. How the fuck are you? I'm I'm great. Good. I think I'm great. That's good. At least I'm fine. All right, fine's good. We'll take fine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, thanks for being a guest on the podcast. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course, no problem. Hey, do me one little favor. Just move that microphone down just a little bit. Down like that. Perfect. Okay. So much better. So much better. Um, yeah. So you know, I've I guess I've known you for like a long time now. You yeah. know, at least I think I feel like I met you about ten years ago. I think it's more. It's, it's probably more. Yes, I think it's it's back in the days. You know. Yeah. Right. The back in the days. Back when in the days when we were like always everywhere. Yeah. And I think we saw each other everywhere. All the time. Yeah. Yeah. And like for people that are like new to the, I haven't met you before. You, you're a, a blogger and I mean, is, do people still blog anymore? Is that a thing? <laughs> I stopped blogging for some years, uh, but it's definitely been a long time of blogging. But, and this last year I have been taking it back. Like sometimes I go in and I write a blog post because yeah. I, I miss writing and a blog is a totally different thing than Instagram and Snapchat and all this other stuff we're doing. Yeah, okay. Because I feel like so many people are focusing more on Instagram now. Yeah, because everything was moved there. But yeah. it's, it's different. I kind of miss the vibe that we had in blogging because when you're reading a blog, you, you go into that space and you stay into that space and you can read this long post and you can just be in that vibe. Hmm. But I feel when you're in Instagram, you can read a post, but it's always like ching, 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 a lot of other stuff happening at the other at the same time. Yeah. And you're jumping from here to there and between a lot of different people. Yeah, exactly. So with a blog, you can kind of stay in somebody's personal universe. You can like yeah. stay in their blog realm and check yeah. out some earlier posts. And But we don't have time for that anymore. Like when I was a top blogger, like many years ago, we were probably like 10 pl top bloggers in the stars. Like we... We weren't that many people yeah. that were doing blogging, but suddenly more and more people starting to blog, and then Instagram came, and then Snapchat came, and the influencer word mm. came. Because there was no, there was no such thing as an influence. That word didn't exist. I remember no. it was just like, oh, you're a blogger, and like yeah. a blogger kind of was like an influencer in a way, but without the word influencer. Yeah, we didn't use that word. Because you're influencing people. That's what you do. Because mm, people are reading your blog. And yeah. you're getting like a lot of people reading your blog. Because when I used to see it was a lot of events and a lot of fashion events and yeah. things like that. And I guess you, you probably got invited to attend them so that you could yeah. experience it and then write about it. And then people could yeah, yeah, write yeah. something like that. That's, that's the same that's going on right now in, with Instagram. But now we had the pandemic. So mm. for a long time, there were some... Some uh, of these brands were trying to have like online events. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought that was pretty cool, but I didn't attend any one of them. But I think um, before we were attending a lot of this stuff um, to promote them. And then it went away for some years, of course, because of the pandemic. And now I guess it's back again and people are everywhere. But I'm not, I'm not doing that blogging thing um, as my main job anymore. So from blogging, I started this fitness team mm. and I, I did that in 2015. Mm. I've been a team leader in the team until uh, last year. Mm. So now a friend of me in Spain, she took the role as a team leader. So I'm still the CEO, mm. but she's the team leader of that team. And, um, and yeah, and then I also started the self-development course. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, because I remember, I think I ran into you in Frogna like five years ago or something at like Smoothie Exchange or something. And you were talking about going to, <laughs> must have been Spain or Portugal with like a group of people on yeah. some trip. Yeah, that was Team Elike. Yeah, Team Elike. Yes. Yeah, okay. And that was a, is that a self-development trip or was that just purely fitness? What That's was that? Team Elike was both uh, a fitness and uh, self-development. But it was it's like when you join Team Elike, you start on a diet and you follow a program for a workout. Mm. And you do this for several months or weeks. Yeah. And that's the same thing now, but it's only online. Before we had like this five months journey where we met once a month. Yeah. And then we had this one trip to Spain as well. But now the, <laughs> the team leader uh, that 
um, runs Team Elica right now. She is the one that hosted the resort in Spain. So yeah. she lives in Spain. Okay. So she knew about a lot about my team before she took the role as a team leader. Yeah. But now I step a little bit more back to focus on other things. And I'm, yeah, I'm doing a lot of different things. I'm a photographer as well, you know, and yeah, yeah. I'm a writer. I'm trying to do a book. Yeah. Okay. Things. Cool. Yeah. And um, like, what that was was it a successful program? Like, if people that signed up for it for the five months, like, did you see a lot of positive transformations in people? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. So like, was it like a weight loss, fitness kind of get mm -hmm. your life together kind of thing? The first, I don't know if you knew it, but in 2015, I did a fitness competition. Oh, was it a TV show? It was on TV as well, but it was not a TV show. It was a fitness competition, you know, okay. where you go on the scene and you... Oh, bodybuilding. Yeah. You were a bodybuilder. But yeah, but I, wouldn't, I wasn't that big as a bodybuilder. I no. was like more into the bikini fitness. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> I, didn't know, I didn't know that. No, I did that as a... It was a challenge. Yeah. So I did it in three and a half months. But what happened when I did it, I understood that the feeling of mastering something... Yeah. I hadn't had that before. Uh, I hadn't experienced the feeling of actually mastering something. I understand. So that's what happened. I also discovered that I could look myself in the mirror and suddenly I had this fitness body. And I was like, but I don't feel different. Mm. And then I started to think about all the people that are, uh, y you want it so bad because you think that your life will change. Mm. But then you change on the outside, but you're still the same on the inside. Yes. So I had like a lot of wake up calls during this time. Yeah, okay. And also I experienced the feeling of how little I knew about food and my body. Mm. And when I just followed this program, three and a half months, short time, I just followed this thing and I was just doing this workout and my body changed completely. And then I was starting to think, oh my God, we know so little. Like people are complaining so much, like, oh, I feel so bad in my body. I want to be like that. I want to be, I can never be like that. I, you know, mm. but it isn't that hard if you do the right thing. Yeah. So this was what I wanted uh, more people to know. Mm. And this is the time I'm starting Team Elikir yes. in 2015. Okay. So it started as a fitness journey yeah. where we were following a lot of girls to the stage. Mm. Some boys, most 99% girls mm. all the way. And my team just grew and grew and expanded and it got really huge. And um, I'm at one time I met the wall <laughs> as everybody does when it's got, it's getting a lot of work. Yeah. I had like two courses um, a year and one of the courses, I think it was Kul Fem as a Kul Five, mm. fifth um, group i had 850 applications to be in the team wow and is there a limited amount of spaces oh we were growing like we w i started with i think the first group was 13 and then it was 30 and then it was 40 50 the most we had with like this fadere like some of the people helped me from another team to be uh, continuing for free, but then helping me. So we had this fadere role. Mm. And then we were at the most 110 people mm. in this five month uh, journey. Yeah, okay. So so it was... It's it a lot of people to keep was track of and a lot of things to do. And you're probably giving a lot of yourself to make sure that everybody sticks with the program. And yeah, 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 yeah. Constantly so yeah, doing yeah. things. So we had this amazing fitness coach who were doing like the diet and the workout. And I was kind of the team leader who brought in this um, teaching of um, meditation, self-development and all this other stuff. So mm. we always brought a lot of uh, people into our courses to teach yeah. about self-development. And this was always a part of Team Eliker and the... Um, uh, the group of uh, fellowship and then what's it what is, is it's the community community yeah the community yeah, yeah the, the feeling of being a community it uh, and friendship were made and there's mm. still a lot of friendship that was made in team Eliker. but then uh, the pandemic came then i had been taking a break on team Eliker. and uh, when we were sitting in the pandemic i had covid uh, one of the first in Norway, I think, mm. <laughs> because the newspaper were like, oh my gosh, she has COVID. 
But um, <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. Like nobody, wa- people were like standing like 30 meters from my garden uh, and uh, or my apartment and saying like, I-, I left a bag with some food for you. And they're like crazy uh, scared to yeah. be. Uh, yeah, yeah. But um, but anyway, then I started this team Eliket online. Mm. So I took a break from the big journey, and then I sat back and I thought that now everybody misses staying together, like the community feeling. Yeah. And then I was thinking, can I do this online? Can we have the community in a Facebook group and still do this? Mm. And then Team Eliket became a eight week course. Yeah. And it still is. Perfect. Yes. Okay. Wow. Shit. That's a that's kind of a that's a journey. Yeah, it is. It's yeah, a big journey. but I think it's pretty cool that you got involved in something that like just has this idea to try to help people and transform you know their lives to be something more positive. Yes. And you know, like the journey that you go through when you, I think what was interesting is when you said that you felt like that you mastered something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like mastering something is such a incredible feeling. It, it is. And I, I understood that I never had that as a child or anything. So and mastering, it was staying on the diet mm. and, and showing up to the workouts mm-hmm. because it was intense. But it was also so fun and you got so much more energy and you felt so good eating that clean. Yeah. And I ate a lot. Like people think you eat less when you're on a diet to build muscles, mm. but you, you eat so much more than you're used to. Yeah. But cleaner of course yeah yeah. you just cut out all the bullshit yeah and that's what you're mastering you're mastering cutting out the bull- bullshit yeah. like when all your friends in, is sitting eating all this other shit and you know that you got a strict diet because you're gonna go on this scene mm. uh, in this amount of time yeah yeah so mastering that and being able to see like i am a chocolate junkie like mm, i love chocolate it's the norwegian yeah. chocolate especially uh, yeah, yeah it's yeah. so good so so it was pretty hard for me and i don't think any of my friends believed i'm gonna was able to do it yeah because yeah everybody knows i'm a chocolate junkie but staying away from it i had my i had some days where i like breaking everything and i was like (laughs) eating a lot yeah but yeah it went okay and it was a fun experience and it led to the online team that I have now. Yeah. You know, one thing about when you master something, I feel like you understand the process that's involved for mastering something. And then it becomes easier to master something else. Yeah. You know what I mean? You get one, two, three, four, and then you go, ah, there's a pattern here. Yeah. And the pattern is just, you know, sticking to something and, you know, maybe like just always showing up and turning up and even doing it maybe when you don't even feel like doing it. Yeah, making it a habit and also... I am listening to this uh, <coughs> audiobook these days. It's uh, Seven Habits uh, something. Oh, yeah, okay. Have, have you heard about it? it? M- maybe not. Is it Atomic Habits? Uh, no, 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 no. That's really popular now. But I'm actually going to f- tell yeah. you what the, the name of it is. Oh, is it Seven Habits of Highly Effective People? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah. I've, I've, that always pops up on like my audiobook on Audible. It's like yeah. r- always a recommendation. Is it good? It's really good. But yesterday I was listening as I was walking my dog outside and they were talking about or he was talking about um, the bad habit of wanting wanting the quick fix. Like we want we want the quick fix. We want to know everything now. Like we see somebody is professional at something and we want to be it and we want it now. Mm. We don't want to do the work. We just we just want to be that. So we we're looking for the solution to have it right now. Mm. But the thing is that if you get it right now, like if I told you to just give you every, I could give you everything you want in your whole life right now, like uh, the money, the house, the car, like, or whatever it is, or mastering something, an instrument or anything, I don't think you ever will have the feeling of deserving it. Mm. Like, because you didn't do the work, it just came for free. Yeah. You don't value it as much either. No, you know, it's like, it's, it's a, it's the process that is fun because yeah. it's it's like when you did the the fitness journey as an example like the process is so fun because you're learning all the way and you have to meet yourself in the door mm. <laughs> Norwegian expression yeah so many times because it's hard and once you start to work out and eat clean and you have this good habit all the bullshit and the trauma or whatever bad shit you have inside it starts to come to the surface mm. so it's a lot of things that you have to go through mentally and emotional when you're doing 
this kind of stuff. Yeah. People don't think about that. But no. I know the breakdowns all these girls have uh, in a period of time when they do the diet. Like, I know, like, okay, now it's three months. They're going to explode. Something's going to come up. Something's going to happen emotionally. But... The process is the fun. It's like when you build something, when, when you build a company, mm. it's fun when you build it. And when you have like this goal that you want to reach on this day, I'm going to reach this goal. But when you reach the goal, it's over. Mm. Then it's finished. Yeah. Because you had, then it's just something you, you tell about. It's like, I did that. Mm. I actually did that, but it's done. Yeah. So we, we focus so much on the goal, but we forget that the whole fun is the experience with uh, developing yourself and learning mm. and everything that you're building every day. It's yeah. Like, yeah. I, I understand. It's, I feel like I have that process with at least two things that I have in my life. And one thing is Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, yeah. where if I could have just downloaded a program where I would have been a black belt in yeah. like two minutes... I would have lost the journey. Yeah. And the journey where you get to try things and fail and spend time with people and learn things, that really is the reward. Yeah. Like it's not being just a black belt. Like that's just a, a thing, you know, but the time that you spend doing something that you love. Yeah. And the same with stand-up comedy. Like when I'm doing stand-up comedy, like I love going to all of these shitty shows that maybe there's five people in the audience and everybody's bombing. And I love like always hanging out with like different comedians and I wouldn't ever want to skip all of that just to get a Netflix show. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, cool. Like maybe the goal is to get a Netflix show, a Netflix uh, stand up special. But just to get it without going through the grind doesn't feel as valuable. No. Like the thing becomes more valuable because of the effort that you need to put into it. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Shit. Yeah. That's, it's a good realization to have. It yeah. really is. I think people forget that because when you're accepting where you are, it's all about accepting. I think like uh, every problem you have uh, in every aspect in your life, mm. if you break it down and you look deeply into it, if it's your relationship, your job, your friendship, whatever it is, it's all about accepting. Mm. Like you can have a trouble with somebody that doesn't behave as you want and you can be so annoyed and you can go around carrying carrying this feeling of being annoyed and wanted to change somebody. And it's such a hard feeling to go around with, especially when you're in a re relationship and your partner is behaving in a different kind of way that than you want him to be or mm. her, mm. you know? So then when you accept, you just accept that they're different or they do something in a different way. Mm. Accepting is everything. Yeah, exactly. And also accepting where you are today. Yeah. Like in your journey. This this is where I am today. And I might not get tomorrow. I don't know if tomorrow will be there. Mm. Like now everything that happens in the world, appreciating and being like grateful for being exactly where you are. And I think the older we get, we understand that every moment is so precious. Like instead of just being bored at home because you don't have anything to do tonight, like make that evening special. Like appreciate being in your own company, having space for yourself, having the time to read something or learn something new, take a course, go to workout, go for a walk, you know, all these things that we are taking for granted. And when we have the opportunity, we want something else. But then when you have a life full of uh, kids and husband or wife or dog and uh, this whole thing and everything is around you and then you'll probably f find a problem with that too, you know? Then mm. you will be like, oh, I want space, I want to breathe, I want a long time, you know? Mm. You're always just seeking for something else. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. I know exactly what you mean. Because a, a time where I notice that is if I'm sick. Or yes. like at the moment, I kind of have a sore back. I hurt my lower back. I don't know how I did it. And now I just want to do like, I just want to be able to like work out. You know, yeah. I can't work out now. Like yeah. I, I can't lift weights. But I mean, it's such a simple thing that you'd be like, oh, I've got to get to the gym. I've got to do it. Yeah. Now that's the thing I really want to <laughs> do. Or even if I'm just like walking my dog for a while, like, ah, oh, my back's starting to hurt. Something like walking the dog might have been like this. Oh, I got to take him out at 10.30. Yeah. But when you have a sore back, you're like, I wish I could just do that with no yeah. problem. Yeah, yeah. I had this when when uh, the COVID when I had COVID the first time. Yeah, it was I was so ill. It mm. was really bad, and I uh, lost my lung capacity. So oh I, no! Yeah, so I had like hard breathing. I was like, 
like really exhausted whatever whatever I did. I could get up from a couch to the kitchen. It felt like I've been running a marathon. Yeah. It was crazy. And the feeling I had sitting inside in isolation because it was in the start, I was totally isolated. Mm. It was crazy. And with my kid. And, uh, th- th- and during that time, I was just imagining walking in the woods, like, oh my God, I'm gonna appreciate that woods so much and being able to work out, oh my God, I'm gonna work out so much. I'm gonna appreciate it every day that I have the ability to actually go out and do that. Mm. Yeah, so, but maybe we have to sometimes lose something for a, a moment to understand what it is. Yeah, you yeah. gotta you gotta appreciate it yeah. by like yeah. That's I think that's true. That's true. You know, another thing I wanted to talk to you about was because I mean I've been following you on Instagram I guess ever since Instagram existed, and then maybe it was like last year. It must have been last year. I just saw that you moved to Bali, and I was like, oh shit, that's a pretty fucking like brave <laughs> thing to do. I guess like the pandemic was just kind of coming to an end and. I know that you're a single mom and you just decided to like you know, leave, <laughs> l- leave everything yeah. and then go and live in Bali for six months. And I no, thought, not six months, a year. Was it a year? Yeah, it was a year, but it was shortened down to 10 months because of the lockdown when I were going. Yeah, exactly. So like, I, for, you know, I think that like there's a lot of different ways that people can live life. Yeah. And li- in Norway, you know, you, you get used to one kind of style. But just living in Norway, I have my kid in school and I pick the kid up. I do mm. my job, mm. yada, yada, yada. But then you just decided, no, fuck that. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm going to go. We're going to have an adventure in Bali for a year. Yeah. Like How, how did that all start? Um, how did it start? Like, I always wanted to take a year like I, f- I felt like trapped. Mm. No way. I, I, I travel a lot when I can. I travel, but I always wanted to like take my daughter and go somewhere else. And I was uh, before this, I had been looking at uh, London and like think close by because of her father here in Norway. And I would be like, okay, if we're there, it's really short to go back and forth. Was looking on those opportunities, and I was thinking I can go back home for work once a month like this. But then the pandemic were, and I realized that, oh, my my work is online now. Like, everything I do is actually online. And then I was talking to a friend first. We were like, oh, it would be so fun. We both single mothers take our daughters to go vacation. And then it was it was on a lunch, and it was from vacation to, maybe we should just move away one year. Like, we were just spinning wild, and then... It's like with everything with me and everybody who knows me know this, that when I start on ID, people can be shattering like for fun. But I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I'm going, I'm going into it. I'm like, this, this is going to happen. And um, I just got crazy on this idea to go to Bali because I've been in Bali in 2019 for three weeks. Mm. And this was the first place where I actually relaxed. And it was the first time in my whole adult life that I were on vacation without blogging. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah, because I've been blogging since I was 19 years old. Yeah. So whole my adult life, mm. my pregnancy, when I got a baby, everything, I've been blogging. And when you blog, it's not, like people can think it's easy. It's not at all. You don't have your free weekends and your free Easter or Christmas or summer in Christmas time, then you have more readers, then you want to blog more, you know? So you, you are blogging all the time, all the year. Mm. You're, giving, you're giving something, something, and you're giving new pictures, new text, everything. And people think that, I, I hear a lot of people, it's like, oh, you, is you just a blogger or something? It's like, oh, you don't know. It's so much work with doing that. And the bloggers and the influencers that really does it in uh, their life every day, they are really... Um, uh, yeah, they, they love doing this to give and to show and to um, inspire people. Does it does it feel like sometimes though that like you are like constantly having to do more and more and more and give more and more? So it feels like there's always like it, it's difficult to 
take a mental break because even yeah. if you're enjoying something yeah. you go oh this is for yes, the blog yes yes oh, yes so you never get to switch off yes so my uh, i'm a writer so my my strength in uh, blogging was writing mm. like writing about real feelings real stuff mm. and when i was sitting on the subway or out for lunch or looking at somebody passing me it was typing in my head i could <sighs> see the text it was like I was sitting on the da, 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 and I saw these people. This girl was staring. You know, I was writing yes, like all the time. All the time. All the time oh I was writing. God. Like if something happened in lunch, you would be like, <laughs> I was in lunch later <laughs> today and this and this happened, you know? Yeah, yeah. So when I went to Bali, it was the first time this stopped. And I remember also a time sitting on the subway and this texting was gone. And I was like, oh, I lost it. I lost my I lost my blogging skills or my writing skills. Mm. But when I was in Bali in 2019, I had this break and I I just I just loved being present with my daughter on vacation there and we had this amazing time and I want to show her the world. Mm. Like I've been taking her a lot of places. And my main reason to take my daughter to other cultures is mm. that we are, you can say we are spoiled, we are lucky, we won the lottery or whatever. We live in Norway. And if we don't go and explore the world, we don't know what we have. Like, not at all. And we are creating so many stupid problems because we are bored. Mm. <laughs> like, we have everything. Mm. Like, imagine in other countries where they have less and they are working so hard for everything, you know? Every day is struggle. Every day is, do we have enough money for food? Or we have to make this, we have to do this. We have so much more free time. And oh yeah, people say they want more hours at, in their days, but stop scrolling and stop watching Netflix. Take away the TV, take away the screen, and you will get all the hours that you're missing, you know? So I want my daughter to know what it is out there. I don't want her to just be in the Norwegian bubble growing up and when she grows up she she doesn't know you can you can see the drama that goes into the school as well in, in the kids school in the high school the good drama we are creating you know stupid things materialistic things so yeah I want to show her more of the world so back to this choice um, after this lunch with my friend I was all in she was like probably 40 percent or something she <laughs> okay. was like haha good I cool idea yeah. but i don't think i can do that yeah so she was like the day after or something she was like i don't think i'm able to do that uh, right now but i already sent the uh, daughter's father a text message like this long <laughs> text message was uh, where i said like imagine her being in another country she will go to international school and i sent her him the schools like this and this and this and this is the cost blah 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 she will learn to speak english it will be good for her she will see another culture and um yeah after uh, sending this text messages i was like oh he's gonna say no but then he just replied something like this looks good let's talk tomorrow and i was like Wow, nice. <laughs> I'm like, what? So I, uh, and this was in December, November, December in, uh, oh, oh my God, well, now it's 23, we came back in 22, we went there in 21, so this was his, was the end of 2020. Okay. Oh my God, the yeah. years just passed. It's fast, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, 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 so we went in 21. Yeah. Came back in 22, yeah. So I knew it for half a year. And I waited a long time before I shared it with my followers. I think I waited six months. Mm -hmm. I think I did it in May. And my yeah. daughter and me were actually coloring our hair pink for this occasion. We colored our hair pink and then we took some picture and I posted like on Instagram, like we are moving to Bali. Mm. And um, it was so it was so easy, you know. People think that it's so hard. Like they have all these excuses. Like, oh no, I can't because of my work. Mm. I can't because of my daughter. I can't because of this and this. But you don't know before you try. Like the school thing was not a problem at all. I sent the principal like, just, hey, I want to take my daughter to Bali one year, and they were like, that's awesome. That's good. Do that. You <laughs> nice. know. Nice. They were supportive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I took her out of seventh grade, like the last uh, last year of child school. Mm. 
So, and then she went to Montessori in Bali, international oh. school. Wow. Everybody spoke English. Perfect. She was not good in English at all. And I was like, welcome to school. Bye. See you later. <laughs> yeah, and figure she, it out. Yeah. Yeah, of and course. And she was just uh, dropped into it and she had to learn. Yeah. And she learned so much during this year. Of course. Of and, course. Then, and then she comes back and she starts uh, in high school, in eighth grade. Mm. And it's like, it's no problem. Like, it goes so fast a year. Mm. And for me, that year feels like a big upgrading of myself. Mm. It was easy. Mm. Was, uh, I had the father's approval. I, uh, I had my work online. I rented out my apartment. I even went in plus, like I got money from renting out my apartment. And it's really cheap to live in Bali. It's expensive to travel. Yeah. But it's cheap to live there. It depends how you want to live, though. You can live expensive there, too. And the food is great, and the weather, the temperature, everything. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was like magic. I've I've been to Bali, and and it's it, it's it's a very, it's a very beautiful place, and it's a great culture, and there's a lot of like, it's just nice to look at. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's it's a very vibrant community. There's always things happening. It's you know what I mean? There's always things happening. There's always things happening. Um, but it seems like it was, you know, I, I guess you were also able to earn money because you were working online, yeah, yeah. right? So you had that taken care of, which was, you know. Yeah, but it was less, it was hard because the war started in Ukraine when we were there yeah. and, uh, that was also difficult to be an influencer or uh, promoting anything that you want to sell online. Mm. It just felt so wrong mm. when that was happening, you know, like, Oh, people dying, but you want to buy this? Like, you don't want to do that. No. And I also got an Ukraine friend in Bali that started living with us because she had a really hard time. So I had, like, the war so close to me. Mm. And she was, like, FaceTiming her family that was hiding for bombs, you know? Yeah, so that's crazy. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Wow. So, but I had I had a little bit of savings, but it's, it's not expensive to do that, you know? And people are too afraid to be broke i think yeah like S so you, s you you had less money but you spent less as well yeah you scaled your yeah. expenses down yeah and also i think like i can see i have a lot of friends that been working since they were yeah after school you start working mm. and you do this eight to four thing yeah. all the way and i never did that and i have been a lot of broke like i have been a lot of years living from the hand to the mouth or what do you say in Norwegian mm. <laughs> like really just surviving yeah. sometimes but I used all my money every chance I had to travel mm. like I remember one I ha once I had like 10,000 kroner and I was like fuck I have 10,000 kroner I'm gonna go to San Francisco <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> and I just went yeah. you know and it always it, it always just you you handle it, you fix it in some way. But the urge for me to go see the world is always been that huge. And maybe I didn't have a lot of money all the time. Sometimes I had more, sometimes less. But I have seen so much. I've been so many places. And I've grown so much. And I learned so much from all these different cultures, you mm. know? Yeah, it really enhances your quality of life and your perspective of yes. life. Yes, I, I'm a, I'm a I traveled a lot as well. A lot of people from Australia do. You know, yeah. I went backpacking for like two and a half years when I was like 21 or something like that. Yeah. And then I travel every chance that I get. But when you have like kids and responsibilities, it does become harder. You know what I mean? You're like, ah, oh, fuck, I got to either just go by myself or leave the kid with the mom or whatever. Mm. So the opportunities that you have to travel don't always... Um, there's a point in life where maybe it gets a bit more complicated. Yeah. So yeah. if you have the chance to go when you, there's a green light, just fucking take it. Yeah. Yeah. And also just plan for it. Like a lot of people, um, a lot of people think I was so brave that I did this. Mm. I was like, oh my God, you're so brave. Do you actually dare to do this? But for me, it wasn't about being brave. It was being able to. It mm. was like I was just these birds who just wanted to fly and suddenly s something opened the door and I was like, wow, yes. Yeah. So it wasn't like me building up my courage. No. Like I was never scared of doing this. Yeah. I was just suddenly understood that, oh, I can do this. And 
the kid's father um, is willing to let me take her away for one year. Yeah. He came twice, though. He yeah. came for Christmas and he came for Easter. So he, he was down there visiting her as well. But, um, yeah, just being... Um, the planning of it, like people say, uh, or people were asking me, how did I do it? Like, how can I do something like that? Mm. And I always say, you have to make the choice. Just make the choice. And then you figure out. Like, you say, I want to do this. I'm going to do this and this at this date. Mm. Like I said, I wanted to do, uh, go to Bali. I'm going to do it in seven months. Next school year. I'm going to do it then. And that was my decision. And yeah. after I decided... Then I had to like figure out everything else. Mm. Like how would I do this with my apartment? How would the work be? How would the school be for her? Uh, does she have a place in that school? Can I get her in there? Yeah. Like all that stuff. It seems like, and I talk to a lot of different people about things that they've done. Yeah. And it seems like the answer is always the same. Yeah. Like it's always like you want to do something and there's always going to be problems to solve. Yeah. Or challenges to accomplish yeah. you know i want to do i want to open a store here okay you got to get the money you got to get this you got to get that okay just you just got to work your way through a list of things until you're there yeah right yeah and it's also the uh, the experience by solving this problem mm. you, you're learning so much like do yeah. you really want everything do you want somebody to say do you want your boss to come and say hey you just take a year off i fixed everything you just go down there i paid everything for you you just go mm. then it's like okay yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you do it and you have to figure it out and you have to figure these rules and this yeah. and this and you have to understand how everything works. Yeah. And it was really hard for us because we we had packed down our house mm. or apartment and the new, um, the guy who was renting it came. Or, or we, yeah. Uh, so my apartment was, uh, apartment was rented out and then we were supposed to go to Bali. And then I was living in a hotel in Oslo for three days, like having my last days, inviting a lot of friends to downtown, and we were going out saying goodbye. And then my phone rings, and it's like, it's a lockdown. You no! <laughs> yeah. You oh, can't shit. go in. You couldn't get... Oh, no. fuck. So then we had to stay in Oslo, and we did not know when it was opening. It could be tomorrow. It could be, like it's in so Indonesia was in lockdown. Indonesia and oh, Indonesia. I don't damn. know if you know about the government in Indonesia. They're strict. It's yeah, it's strict, but it's like nobody knows anything. It's just rumors. It's like oh, it's gonna open. It's gonna it's gonna open. Nobody Got knows. You. Yeah, yeah. So it was starting like living on the couch with some friends, and then another couch. Then we were loaning an apartment for a while. Then I moved into the apartment of my friend at Bislet, and we were staying there for a while. And then suddenly it was like she was doing online school with a new school yeah. in Bali. And then all the friends in Oslo were going to school. Yeah. So then suddenly the teacher in Oslo said, do you want her to, you can come back for uh, like, and then I was like, yeah, let's make her go back. Mm. So then I said to the school in Bali, like, I think I'm going to, we don't know how long this is going to last. Yeah. And instead of her sitting home with this time zone different and everything, mm. I'll, I'm going to like to go to school with her friends. And then I had to write her into the school in Oslo again. Yeah. And then she went. And then it goes like, one week and then it's open perfect it's Let's open uh, when it was open it was like okay go and get our covid test and everything and then i was so scared that the covid test would be positive because everyone mm. has covid but then we got the negative covid test and i was just to do it, making the trip airplane everything and yeah then i have to sign her out to the original school again and then we were leaving perfect but but it was two months in a yeah. suitcase. Yeah, fuck that. Yeah, That's, it yeah. started to be cold. I, ol I only had summer clothes mm. because I was supposed to go in July. Yeah. So I only had summer clothes. I was like, I, I'm not going to buy a winter jacket. I'm not going to buy a winter jacket. There you go. <laughs> but in the end, like, I had to have a jacket. Like, fuck, I'm going to have to buy one <laughs> jacket. It's getting colder in Oslo. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, when I went, it was... And I didn't tell anyone because I... It felt so bad staying in Norway and telling my followers and everything like, we're still here, we're still here. It's yeah. like one month, one month, one week, two week. But then I just deleted my social media and we went and we were in Indonesia uh, first in Jakarta for eight days in uh, quarantine mm. at a hotel. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's it. Hotel room, hotel food every day. In. Yeah. But it was really high floor. So we had like this amazing view. 
And then we went to Bali. And when we had been in Bali one day, then I posted it. And I was like, we are here. Made it. Yes, it was nice. so good. Hey, I want to ask you something because you're talking about your, your daughter a lot. What do you think about the, uh, wasn't there like a debate about like influencers posting pictures of their kids recently? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I know that like there's some like the, some people want to like make it a kind of, law where you're not supposed yeah, to do yeah, that yeah, or yeah. What, what, what are your what are your thoughts on that oh my god i haven't i haven't made any thoughts about those rules it's like when when i started blogging it was about my pregnancy mm. like when i started blogging for real mm. when i had like an ambition of earning money of doing blogging i i was pregnant and then she was born and i shared a lot because then it was all about my life. It was my life and this little human that doesn't have her own life yet. She was just with me, you know? So it's still about my life. And I did this and I shared a lot about being a mother and I got got to be a single mother really early. She was five months when we moved into apartment, uh, me and her. So I was writing about that, doing my own job and, and just sharing from my days. And she was a big part of my days. But I've been to debates about this before. Mm. Uh, and then uh, she grows up. And when she started to have like, you can sense this privacy with her and her friends. Like when she wants to, when she has her secrets and when she has like this kind of privacy, you can see they get that really young. Mm. I would never I would never post anything about that, you know? Mm. Like I would never I would never do anything that could go back on her. Mm. Because I, it, you can think that oh my well, one time she's going to be big and she's going to see all these things and now she's there. She's mm. going to be 14 years old and she can just google herself <laughs> and she's there. Like it's a lot of pictures of me and her from she was a kid mm. online mm. and that's a part of her world like that's what she has to deal with her mother being a blogger but i never um like now she's so big and it's many years ago that i started to ask her for permission because she knows what it is so i have to ask her and she if she says no i don't want you to post that then i don't you know mm. so it got less and less about her but sometimes i share something about life and us because it's always been me and her yeah is I've been living alone with her since I moved out from the baby father. I never, I had boyfriends, but I never had, uh, I never been living with somebody. Mm. So it's like been me, me and her all the way. So it's yeah, it's just been, I've been sharing that. And if I, but I never used her. Oh, it's hard to say about these commercial things. I think it's like people have to make their own choices in this. It's always gonna go back to that because it, it's so many. Nine, uh, so many different ways to s to look at this, you know, mm. because they use pe you use kids in other commercials. Can you do it in the family thing, you know? And when is it right? When is it wrong? I think you never should force your kid. You should never force a kid to do anything that it's uncomfortable, or if the kid says no, or or if you can see that your child is not do doesn't like it. And also being the grown-up to know that they are too young to take responsibility of things. Mm. Like, I'm really strict with her. With her and social media, I'm super strict. Like, okay, so she's, like, not allowed to spend, like, all day just oh, no, scrolling no, no, TikTok no. or oh, something no, like no, that. Oh, no, 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 no. She was the last girl in her class having a phone. Yeah. And she probably... W she was angry at me for a while... And I, I was okay with that. I was like, this thing, you're going to be angry. And it's so, it's so okay. Mm. Because I'm, I'm teaching you present. Mm. I'm te te teaching you how to be present, how to be in your own company. And she's super creative. She's drawing. She's making stuff. She, she always have this creative mind, you know. And I think that's because I taught her how to be bored. Yeah, that's such an important thing to teach kids. Yeah. So important. Yeah. To to be bored and and she never had an iPad. I never owned an iPad. Mm. Like when she was a kid, you could see uh, a lot of moms giving the iPad away all the time. Mm. I never did that. So I've been really strict and she's a, she's a teenager as well and she wants to be on TikTok. Of course she wants, but she has like 1 hour a day. Nice. And she calls me sometimes to say, "Mom, can I have one more hour?" 
and then I, if I feel it's okay, I give her one more hour. But like w when she's home, it's always in the, in the evening. It's putting the phone on the bench in the kitchen, mm. never being in the room, like never. And when we have quality time we say go on the phone i i also do that and sometimes we go on adventures we go out even if it's just to go to the city to go to shopping or something we would be like okay we're leaving the phones at home mm. because it it is a, a different distraction from it the is quality time that you're gonna have together yeah it's always yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the same is with friends like sometimes when i go to friend's house or something i would be like okay i'm gonna leave that no i don't have a car but before i had a car and i would just leave it in the car mm. Because it is a distraction and people mm. can say whatever they want. But I have seen so many adult people sitting on the phone, like when they're talking to me, like, and then they're like looking up a little bit and they <laughs> look down at the phone <laughs> and, and I would be, but I know how to handle this now. So yeah, how do you handle it? When people are scrolling their phone while you're talking, you just stop talking. And when you stop talking, they would be like, yeah, continue. And then you say, oh, no, no. I'll wait till you finish doing your thing. And then people get uncomfortable. They're, they'll be like, oh, uh, oh, 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 sorry, you know? Yeah, yeah. Because people aren't aware. I, I, do, I do something similar. When somebody's like that, I just go, oh, is that important? <laughs> and if they go, oh, uh, no, it's not important. So I, I, I can wait until you finish. Yeah, yeah. And then we can continue. <laughs> but it, it's almost like they don't even know no. they're doing it. They're not even trying to. They're just like... This here is like a uh, extension of themselves. Exactly. And it just sucks you in yes. and you just go, oh, yes. <laughs> I can't look away. Yeah. It's crazy. It, it, like, it's like a magician that'll hypnotize yeah. you. Yeah. And it's never important. Never. Never important. No. I try to tell like everyone, my friends or somebody's uh, when I'm influencing people, I say like, turn off your notifications. Mm, yeah, like, exactly. Perfect. Like, like Instagram, Snapchat, do you really need notifications? No. No. Like if I want to uh, go into Snapchat, I will go into the app and then I can see if somebody wrote to me. Yeah. I don't want it to pop up. No, uh, fuck or, that. And also Instagram, when you see people, you sit uh, beside some people and you see their phone like bling, 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 bling. Somebody liked somebody. And I'm like, oh my God, do you have, when somebody like your post, do you have a notification for that? I would be, cr I would That's went crazy. crazy. Yeah, because it's so much and you yeah. have to take, you have to take responsibility for your brain. Yeah, I know. Th this is what you feed your brain. And people are like, oh, I wish I did something else with my life. And I'm like, okay, but it's, you have school for free now. You can go and learn whatever you want online. Mm. If, you, if you're creative, you can go on YouTube and you can learn whatever you want. Anything. Do that instead. Yeah. Do something with your life. Yeah. Don't, don't let this notification system and this um, dopamine <laughs> system that it triggers you, don't let it have you. Mm. Like Take control over it. And then phone can be nice. Everything could be good if you use it properly. Yeah, exactly. You got to use it as a tool to yes. enhance what you want to do. And one of the things with the notifications is that it's not what you want to do. You're not being proactive. No. You're not going out and going, I'm going to do this. You're responding to something. Yeah. You're reactive. Yeah. And then that's going to get you out of the zone that you want to be in. I was talking to this person the other day and she used to work in a book club uh you know like uh whatever it's called modiga's book club or something where they sent out like all these letters to people about the different books and they were talking yeah. about the books and then like the statistics that she had on like how like how bad like the amount of people buying books is now or like yeah. reading or joining like the book club thing was insane yeah like there's just so many people not reading anymore they just yeah. don't have that maybe it's like an ability to focus on something longer mm. than what you would normally read as an yeah. Instagram post. And if you want to read through like a four, 500 page book, it doesn't have blue light. It doesn't have like this mm. scrolling function that you're so used to. Yeah. It doesn't have your ability to write. You just need to concentrate and visualize a world that you're reading. Yeah. And all of that has gone away. Like it's just disappearing. I think it's so scary. Like I'm, I'm forcing my daughter to read. You have to. Yeah. You have to do that. And she, she don't want to do it at all, but I'm forcing her. I'm like, you're gonna, she's like, I want to do this. Can I go and buy that? Can I do this? And I was, I'm, and I'm taking this book and it's a, even a cartoon book. Mm. It's a cartoon. It's a fun book for her. Yeah. And I'm like, 
you can do that, but you have to read 10 page yeah. pages first. Because I don't want her to miss out on that. It's too much of, of this, this mm. digital world. And I always tell people to read books. Mm. Like, I always have one older book that I listen to when I walk, like, because then I feel I'm spending my time better instead of listening to other crap. Yeah. So I'm trying to always have one older book, but I also have one book that I read mm. that I have in my hands. And it's so important to put away all distraction because it's going to take you maybe 10 minutes to start to get into the book and to get your uh, visualization start. Like when you see all these pictures, when you read a novel, for example, mm. you see all these pictures, you see these people, you start to create a world in your mind and you have to put away all the other extractions. You cannot be like half on your phone and half reading because then you will be reading and something pops up and you're like, oh my God, that was a nice t-shirt you bought. Oh, okay, on back to the book, <laughs> you <laughs> yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. So it's like all this uh, useless information that you're enhancing at the same time as you're reading. But yeah, you have to give it time and I think it's really important to practice reading. Yeah. It was a... Um, a science report about this or I don't know if it's a science report or it's, it's just a report on people uh, when you read something online they don't finish it like they don't scroll th even through the post they read the headline and they read a little bit and then they share it like oh I'm agree to this and they dis then they share without reading the whole post and I also can notice that you start to read something and you get you think it's interesting and then you feel like, oh, I got a point. Yeah. So I'm trying to force myself to read through, like not just, uh, what is the word in English? Skumlese. Mm, yeah, skim, skimming, skim, yeah, skimming. Not just skim the post, but yeah. actually read it mm. and read it through because yeah. you don't know the whole article before you had read it all. You yeah, know? yeah, that's what was good about NRK. Do you remember that? Before you could comment, you had to answer questions. Oh, you did? Yeah. So if you wanted to comment on an NRK article, it asked you three three questions just to make sure that you read all of it. Is it true? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what oh, I don't know whether they still do it, but that's what they used to that's do. That's amazing. Isn't it? And I remember thinking, oh, that's brilliant. Because so many times you see a Facebook post or whatever, and people are just like writing something mm. wrong. And then somebody that read it goes, uh, they literally discussed that, that in yeah. the article. You fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah. Just read it, dummy. <laughs> Yeah. That would be fun to always have, like, if you want to share an article, you have to ask, answer a question first. Like, why do you want to share it? Tell me what point of the article exactly. is. Exactly. <laughs> but, you know, like, to be a better reader and uh, to be, like, a better family man as well. Yeah. Like, I, um, I started buying the newspaper, yeah. especially on the weekends. So, I'll mm -hmm. buy the newspaper on Saturday and then, like... Instead of like, I mean, sometimes it's if it's shit weather outside and we're just hanging out, like, you know, yeah. like f four freaks in a house. Yeah. Like, I don't want everybody to just be on their own phone. No, no. So I, I can be like sitting at the table. My son can be drawing. My daughter can be like reading or whatever. And then I can just kind of like read the newspaper and then I can just talk to them about stuff. Yeah. I go, what do you guys think about this? Or yeah. do you want to do the quiz? Or should we try and do Sudoku together? That's so nice. It's so nice because do you remember when you were growing up and like yeah. the fucking newspaper was like such yeah, a yeah. everybody had the newspaper yeah can i read that your dad's there yeah and, and, and we just kind of mommy or forcing exactly or like, oh, and, you, and yeah. you would do like the, the, the quizzes or the crossword or there'd be cartoons yeah you know what i mean so i when i came to norway like the newspaper was still at the top like 2007 something like yeah, that yeah. no internet really no like none of this social we media were slow, shit. yeah yeah so <laughs> but everybody got the newspaper yeah i lived with like 10 other students and like eight of them subscribed to getting the avis yeah and then it just disappeared and then i was like fuck i miss that i miss just holding it yeah and then like to like to respond to what you were saying about reading an article finished mm, yeah i i will read an article finished more if it's in a newspaper of course. than if it's just on my phone and my eyes start hurting because on, on your phone you can just swipe it away and it's gone it's gone but i do the same so when i have like uh when i have a paper or a magazine or whatever and i start to read it i i don't feel that i have mastered the article before i'm done so if i half read it i would be feeling something on my shoulder like oh my god you have to read that yeah. through finish me finish, finish me. yeah finish Keep it looking. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and if you don't read it you feel like you're wasting it it's like it's just there and you didn't read it but if you actually read it it, it feels good it's like i did read this yeah yeah look yeah. at you fucking yeah. reading things <laughs> finished go you but so, 
Yeah, I think it's important to keep reading because you we have are, to. We're destroying our focus and we are destroying our brain literally. Totally destroying it. And maybe it's like I don't know, like maybe like I don't know how evolution works. It probably goes pretty slowly, but like if more like if we keep following the trend of spending less and less time focusing on the written word and more and more time just focusing on images and that continues yeah. you know like apple are bringing out these apple glasses yeah. you know and like you know people doing vr and all the metaverse yeah, and all yeah. that sort of shit like we are heading in that direction yeah, like yeah more sure. and more and more and like our gener like dude like fuck man your kid's 13 yeah. My kid's 13. Yeah. Uh, she's looking, they have an i. they use the iPad in school now. I'm so angry about M that. Me too. <laughs> I, I go, so are you fucking kidding? It was an article two days ago in Andrew K about this. Yeah. It was a mother that was uh, doing all this handwriting with her kids at home because they had only screens at mm. school and she could see that their handwriting was so bad. And I can see this for my daughter. My daughter had better handwriting in first and second grade yeah. than she has now. Yeah. Because now it's all these easy ways. And when they're, when they're writing on a computer and stuff, they're just... They don't write, and they also have this autocorrect spelling, you know? Mm. Yeah, they're not learning. They don't learn yeah. how to spell things right. So I'm like, oh my God, it's so important. And I think we are the last generation that can, to have this responsibility of continue teaching our kids about present, being present, writing, reading, all this stuff. And I think... Um, Parents are generally bad at um, keeping into the being present at home. Like, like the kids want the screens. So when they don't get the screens, they start screaming or behave bad because they just want to play on screen or see something. And I think the uncomfortable situation with taking it away, it's so many grown up that also just want to be on the screen. Mm. So instead of taking that time to be uncomfortable and looking at your kid being bad for 10 minutes, they would give the screen. Mm. And I can see, because I can also, it, it, it's not a thing that I taught my daughter to be present and not on screen and then it's like that. No, it's like a, it's con a fight it's a, every day. It's 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 um it's a discipline. Yeah. It's a discipline. It don't need to be a fight. It's a discipline that you have to keep continue doing. Like sometimes you have to be able to take away your own phone and say like, okay, we're gonna have quality time at home, uh, and the kids can be like, oh, I wanna play on this day. I wanna look at the screen. And you can be like, no, you can do anything else. And then they will maybe behave bad, but then put on some jazz or some music or something to just be in the house and have this environment and don't be on your phone yourself because you have to go as a good example exactly you cannot say you should not but i will do mm. and then what happens when the kids are bored let them be bored and crazy for 10 minutes or 15 then they will start to do shit mm. they will start to do things because their brain are starting to get creative and then they will make something or bake something or they want to draw something or they start to play with something they didn't play with before mm. or even just take up cards and play cards at home yeah there's being present with each other and take away those fucking screens Sorry. yeah no 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 <laughs> fuck those screens <laughs> fuck those screens like yeah. I, I know it's good for so many things and I'm an influencer myself so I know all this but this is also why I know uh, how bad it can be Mm. and i don't want my kid to be so influenced that she don't know herself yeah i feel like there's a an entire generation of people that don't really know how to connect with themselves or with other people yeah yeah. i see i go oh you don't know how to you can't get a girlfriend like you, <laughs> you know what i mean like you're spending yeah. more time like trying to talk to girls on screens yeah. and then when you're talking to a girl at a bar in real life like you kind of you kind of like Th there's it's something is weird, weird yeah. dude. Like you know, you, you're kind of like, oh, maybe you hook up with a girl, and then like that goes well, and then the first date, she goes, oh, there's something off with this guy. Yeah, you know what I mean. I can't connect with him. I can't get through because oh. there's this kind of like weird autistic layer. Oh, I, you that, know what I mean? Yeah, I, I know I, what I mean. I know a lot of dudes that can yeah. get laid, but they can't get girlfriends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like so they they're always single. They they just stay in the single single loop and i know it's like that too with a lot of girls and yeah, it's like yeah. i mean i'm 
you know, when I do stand up comedy, I'm talking to a lot of people at once. So sometimes yeah. I'm talking to like 50 people, 100 people, 200 people. And I go like, who's single? Like, yeah. and like so many people I go. And then, you know, I, 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 I kind of like wonder like, why, why are you so pretty? Like, yeah. why are you so like nice? But like, it's, it's hard for you to like yeah. take that time to develop a connection with yourself. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. Like, it's, it's a sad. fucking huge problem. It's, it's a sad. huge because, like, the birth rate of kids that got born like this year or like, last year is lower than ever before. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, people are there's less. Ah, I don't. How do I say this? People are like the birth rate is going down. Yeah, relationships are going down. That's crazy. Isn't it crazy? It is crazy. And you have Tinder and Hinge yeah, and yeah, all yeah. these things. But th this just shows how it is when you get too many options, you can't choose. Yeah. You, all, we, you will Option always, paralysis. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. You get too many options and then you will always look for something better. Mm. Like when, when there is a hinder or something is bad, you would be like, oh no, I will find something better. Yeah. Instead of sticking with one thing mm. and just, yeah, solving the problem or put yourself out there to to meet people like like i don't want to i i have been on these apps for periods like i can do it for a couple of weeks maximum i think and then i get crazy and i delete the app because i i feel so it's so weird with them with the chatting maybe there's nice men in tinder or these apps as well but i think that you have to go through so many bullshit conversation so many bullshit answering stuff and you feel this responsibility of uh, answering and then you have to meet these people to know and then you use this time to scroll and to to see this uh, to talk to these people to write with and chat with them and then you meet them and suddenly when you meet you're like oh this you can feel it right away like this will never happen exactly so it just takes so much of your time yeah I think that it will always be best to meet in person if it's possible. And I think people that want to meet people maybe should be better putting themselves out there. Like join a course, like join a course and do something you want to do. If it's playing a guitar, if it's painting, if it's dancing salsa, like go out there and put yourself on this weird courses that you never would do because you will get some new friends you will meet new people and suddenly you will be um, invited to a dinner and suddenly there's another man invited to the same dinner you, you know yeah yeah yeah. because nobody's gonna knock on your door no nah. it's, it's it's like that and, and like if you go to that dinner yeah that you, you know you, let's say you sign up for fucking some course and then you meet some friends and they invite you to a party or whatever and you yeah. meet some guy like, you're going to know. Like, you're going to have, like, a physical attraction to that person. And a vibe. And a vibe. And that vibe is the thing that, like, you you can't get when you're at home by yourself on the phone. No, and also when you're, when you're chatting and meeting, you know that you're meeting to see if you're going to be a match. Exactly. You know what you're up to. But if, if you meet somebody random in your life, it would be, it would be like... I like that look. Does he like me? I look. I like him. I think is he single? You know all this um, excitement around mm, it. Yeah, the butterflies. The butterflies and, uh, always exciting. But I also have like a theory about um, you see the reality shows like Fireman and stuff like this. It's been created couples in this kind of. Uh, reality shows and mm. i think this is the reason because they're off their phones they're off their social life and then they have to stay with a group yeah and they actually get to know each other like deeply yeah that's a really good point i mean if you have a look at like i know they broke up now but uh like kristen jelsvik and dennis oh you know? yeah but they were together for many many for years for many years yeah, and they yeah. met on paradise hotel like and ages then you have, ago and then you have vendel and petter that's a crazy one to me. Yeah. That's a I crazy think it's, I one think it's to me. Beautiful. I think so too. You know, I I used to work with Petter a lot. We yeah. made like two two shows together a few seasons and we would hang out all the time. Yeah. And before I met him, I, I kind of was like, ah, oh, I got to meet this guy. You know, he's got this reputation. The nicest guy. Yeah. Like the I know, nicest, I know. sweetest guy. Yeah, the yeah. best guy. But he would like always tell, tell us stories about, you know, he loved women. And this was like, you know, I guess yeah, yeah. 10 years, eight years ago. And he was telling us about this girl and this girl. And you never guess what happened. And yeah, these girls yeah. wanted to do this. And then I kept on thinking like, oh my God, this guy's like got a lot of women that want to have sex with him. You know, this guy's, <laughs> this guy's, you know, he's like, he's hooking up with a, a lot of chicks. 
And then when he found Vendela, I was like, oh, that's what you were looking for the whole time. Like this kind of not Growing up this, woman. this almost mother role. You know what I mean? Like, oh, that's crazy to say. But maybe okay. it's crazy yeah. to say, but the age difference is significant. Yeah, but I think it's about the maturity in our the way we behave and the conversations. I think it's like you you are maybe you were dating somebody that you were never matching with in the intellectual level. Yes. But I also think that maybe they wouldn't have found each other if it wasn't for being on TV on the or not on TV but in this bubble where they get to know each other so well. Yeah, because that's where they met, right? On a sh- TV yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, on Farman. Oh, was it Farman yeah, as well? Yeah, yeah. So I think oh, uh, it start, yeah. I think it started there. Yeah, yeah. No, you're. That's a very good point. Mm. That's a very good point. Yeah. Because you're not distracted by any of the bullshit. No. And you're like kind of solving problems together. You and get to know people. You, you get, get to, to know, know new them. people deeply. Because when are you connecting to new people deeply? Never. Like you can shout and she. Oh yeah, she commented me and we DM'd and we text each other. But when do you get to know? people like really deeply well yeah, you yeah probably when you go to like people if you want a man or a woman go to reality shows go to the reality <laughs> show <laughs> go, Get, to, the go to a farm but you know like i i heard this theory the other day that you have like different types of friends you have like a three minute friends a three hour friends and like a three yeah, day yeah, kind yeah, of friend yeah. and it's like if you talk to somebody like oh, okay it's three minutes okay see you later like whether somebody you know on the street yeah, or yeah, whatever yeah, yeah. And That's then, funny. isn't it? Or you have like a three yeah. hour friend, you're like, hey, you guys, you want to grab dinner or have a beer or, you know, watch the game or something. Yeah. And then you have these like three day friends where you go, hey, do you want to go to the cabin for the long weekend or yeah, something? Yeah, and then yeah. those are the people that you're hanging out with all the time. But yeah. if you go onto a show like Fadiman, like your yeah, theory yeah. in the bubble, you've got like three week friends, <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? And you're hanging out with them 24 seven. You go, you know what? I'm seeing a lot of this person and I really like them. Yeah, I think you get I, I think you get like a, a family connection in a way because you stay together for such a long time. But um yeah, that's uh, that's really uh, that's really interesting. Yeah, it is interesting. I had something on my mind and it just fell out. Oh yeah, it'll probably pop back in. You know, another another place that I feel like you get like to have like a real connection with people is doing the podcast. Yeah, you know what I mean. It is. Like, and, and talking about, I have like don't disturb, but the only one who can disturb me is my daughter. Yeah, okay. So uh, I'm gonna hang up, and I'm just gonna write to her. I'm on a, po- I'm, I'm in a podcast. Yeah, if if it's uh, if you need to give her a call as well, we can just pause it. Okay, no problem. We're pausing right now. Yeah, pause. Cool, nice. Yeah, you have to when when the kids call, you gotta answer. Yeah, I think so. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes you never know what's happening. No, you never Something's know. Something's burning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh shit! Okay, call the yeah. fire brigade. Oh, okay. So now I remember. You got it. Nice. Yeah. Yesterday I was talking to a friend, and she's my high school friend, mm. but we speak once a year. Yeah. But when we speak, we speak for maybe two hours on the phone. Like we know we don't call to just say something and hang up. Like it's like. Do you have time to call? Do you have time? And then we are just updating because we live so different lives, but we still have the connection from we were teenagers. So we just we just update each other. Mm. And you know how your teenage friends always stick with you. Mm. If you, it's it's not in your life, but you can remember your teenage friends, like your first friends, and the, the time when you're a teenager. It it feels like it was yesterday in a way. But whatever happened in your 20s, I, I don't remember that. But mm. I remember my teenagers years so well, like all the people in and out in my life right uh, at that time. But the 20s, not so much. So I, I think it's something when you're developing yourself and you're growing and you're becoming this human because we are becoming a human during a time of 20 years almost. Mm. like. Like when we're 15, 15 years, you're still developing yourself to be a full grown body. Mm. So I think it's something with that. Like it's everything you do for the first time, you remember really well. Mm. But when you started doing it over and over again, you don't. Because I uh, always think that it's so different. Uh, oh, it's always been so weird to have this relationship with somebody that's not in my life. But as I talked to this woman yesterday, because she's a woman now. I want to say a girl, but <laughs> she's my age. Mm. And I'm 36. <laughs> so, and yeah, so we still have this bond and we know each other really deeply from the past. Yeah. 
Like we don't have hang out today, but we we were teenager. We did some bad shit together. Like Fuck yeah. yeah, we have some bad memories <laughs> together. We were rude. We were running out in the middle of the night. You know, we yeah. did all this shit. So we know each other's teenager secrets. Yeah, it's kind of a weird weird bond yeah. that you don't have with new people again because mm. they know a new version of you. They would never know you as a teenager. Yeah, exactly. And a lot of the stuff that you did was kind of forbidden. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and, it was and so much forbidden. Exactly. <laughs> and those are the times you look back on and you go, oh shit, this was my home girl back yeah. then when we were like just me and her and we should not be doing this and yeah. here we are. Look at you, you crazy bitch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. I have that. I have that. Fr- I have those friendships. I, yeah. I think everybody does. Yeah. And it's like people, if you meet them, you can still have a long conversation. But I also have this experience with childhood friends, not exactly this one, but somebody else, that whenever I go back to my hometown, you can have like one or two days meeting a lot of the people from your past and you can hang out and you had so much fun seeing each other again. But if you start to go deep into it, you can see that all you have in common is the past. Yeah, I know. So you have like a couple of days where you're just talking about the past. You're like, oh, you remember that time. Ha ha ha. You remember him. You remember her. What happened at that time? And you're laughing about that and you speak it out and you have like have done all this conversation about the past and then it just stops yeah you got to make new memories together yeah you but have to do new shit yeah but then you also realize that you're different yeah you grew apart yeah of course like yeah. i think we have a lot of friendship that we are holding on so hard to and we don't let go because we always were friends but then when you're starting to realizing it maybe you're better off without because you have changed so much mm. so instead of trying to keep together like that's not the problem in this case I'm talking about because I see them really seldom. Yeah. Like uh, when I, once every second year or third year or something. But it's a lot of people sticking together nowadays and you can see they're so different and they just talk shit about each other instead of being friends because mm. they're so different. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have time for that. Mm. I, no, not at all. Like I have like such a busy life, and I don't even have time to see a lot of the friends that I really want to see. No, you know what I mean. Like, cause I'm it's precious. Yeah, it is, and I I kind of like end up spending a lot of time with the people, like, cause I do jujitsu and I do stand up comedy, like two or three nights a week. So I'm always kind of hanging out with people that do jujitsu. Yeah, or people that do stand up comedy. Such a great environment for jujitsu. Oh, it's great. And all, all this, like the. MMA or boxing or all these environments. People think they're so scary environments. I love those environments. It's such a mass of great people there. So friendly. Yes. People don't think that they're no. friendly because <laughs> you're like learning how to punch each other in the face. Yeah. But, but with that comes trust. Yeah. And also the reason everybody punches each other and th- when you're going into this sport, I think it's because you have some kind of traumas. You have some kind of shit inside that you don't know how to deal with. Mm. And when you're starting to do this kind of sport, you in this sport, you have to be present. Mm. Like you have to get, get pre- and some, a lot of people never know how it is to be present and they, they never experienced it, you know? So when you do this extreme sport, you get addicted to it because the present is so revealing. It's such a good feeling of being in a moment because if you're in the ring, you, uh, in boxing, for example, you cannot be thinking about yesterday or something else because no. then you will get punched. Yep. You have to be so there. And the same thing with climbing. Mm. If you're climbing a mountain, you see people get addicted to that too yep. because you're so present. Yeah, you have to be. Yeah. 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 And I think a lot of people don't know that the thing they are addicted to in the sport is actually the presence. I think you're right. Yeah. I think you're 100% right because you don't, yeah, yeah, no, you're right. I like to hear that. Like, I think you're right. I'm like, yeah. yeah, no, but you are. You are right. You know, you like you keep t- like you mentioned it a couple of times, like with trauma, and uh, like I started reading this book. I'm reading it now by a guy called Gabor Mate. You heard of him? No. He's a doctor from Canada, and he has a book all about trauma and how we've normalized trauma. Yeah. And how trauma manifests itself later on in your life through your 
habits and your choices and your personality yeah. but that there's so much of what we choose in our present lives yeah. which is the result of a yeah. trauma that you experienced when you were earlier and it doesn't always need to be a significant yeah. trauma it could even be like a smaller trauma like he calls yeah. it a trauma with a little t where it could be something like not getting invited to the yeah. trip that everybody on the class yeah. was going on or you know maybe even some, some girl broke your heart when you were yeah 14 or something yeah or, or whatever you know so it doesn't always have to be this like big thing no 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 but we all experience trauma throughout our lives that can then manifest itself through even things like sicknesses or illnesses or uh, choices that we make in relationships yeah i think trauma maybe the word has been has gotten more common like it's been a common word to uh, talk about something that uh, that is a problem inside ourselves um for me trauma is definitely a s situation with something changed in yourself and i think that okay so a couple of years ago i started therapy like deep trauma therapy and when i started this therapy i didn't know i had trauma exactly. i didn't know yeah. and i got diagnosed with ptsd mm. and i didn't know it was so scary and good at once it was good because i was like okay it is something you named it thank you and it was scary because what me you know i'm so i'm so functional i'm i'm normal i don't have any problems i function so well but i function so well that it's hard to see that i had problems and for me getting to know that my trauma was causing this ptsd it, it's like to explain this uh, easy it's Example, when you're uh, close to somebody, you get the worst of you, yeah? Mm. So in your relationship, over time, you will trigger something if there is something. And uh, uh, in a relationship some years ago, I got so badly triggered that it's about losing control over your reaction. Mm. Like instead of don't react, I re I'm re reacting without having a control of it. If it's anger, or is if it is pulling away, if it's yelling, or if it's just a deep, deep sense of uh, sadness uh, or loneliness or whatever it is. So that happened to me over and over again, and I felt so bad, and I was depressed for a while, and I felt so different. I was like, why? Why does everybody else seem to function normal? And it looks like I'm doing it. But inside myself, I have this big struggle every day. And I thought it was so hard and it didn't seem like anyone had that. It, I felt like it was only me. Like people were just doing dinner, doing school or work or hanging with friends. It was just so easy. But for me, everything was hard. Even just being in a normal room with a normal conversation was hard for me. You know, and then when I got this diagnosed, I'm so, so happy that I went to get help. And I had some close friends pushing me to do that because I didn't see that I needed it. And I was laughing at first. I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm doing meditations. I'm doing self-development. You know, I didn't know that I actually had to go in therapy and go into my past and go and look at some old pictures that happened to me. Because you have it, in, it, it's like a memory that's inside you. You don't know about it, but it's in there. And it's a bad memory and it's going on repeat. Mm. So when my uh, earlier boyfriend said something that triggered me, I would re-experience this trauma, this mm. bad, bad feeling. And one of the things that happened to me when I was young, I lost my mother. So one of the bad feelings is losing my mother. And that's a heavy, heavy feeling. So I would, <coughs> would re-experience this grief, this loss, without understanding what the fuck is happening. And it was so, so bad and so hurtful. And I didn't understand, you know? So in therapy, I got professional help to connect this. It was like, so uh, you go, we went to a feeling that I had th this reaction and uh, she will locate this feeling in my body, like where, is it in your head, is it in your throat, is it in your stomach, where is the pain? And then I located the pain, and I was like, oh, it's 
when I think and feel about it, it's in the stomach or something. And you only you can know the pain and how it feels. And then she says, can you think of a time, a, another time in your life where you had the exact same feeling? And I'm just suddenly like, whoosh, in a second, I remember something from my uh, teenager's uh, year uh, when I was a teenager or where something bad happened where I felt like really disrespected or really somebody was behavior behaved really bad against me and that was what's happening so th that uh, event that happened in my teenage in teenagers that I re-experienced when I was having this discussion with my early boyfriend mm. and I didn't know that so I was just having this big reaction and by going to therapy I would also go into this old memory and correct it Mm. So she would have me go into my past and be there as me now and look at the uh, other younger girl of me and kind of uh, rebuild this image, like corrugating, like edit it. Yeah, okay. So you went back and you relived something and then you edited how... Yeah, yeah, because you, you play it on repeat and you don't know that you're doing it and you don't... And sometimes oh, remember is sometimes memories uh, change you know so you don't even remember what happened no so you go back and try to almost like take control of the moment take by care of my younger me yeah, in a way damn. so so you know they say if you if you yell at a kid if you take your kid as a young kid and you get fucking mad and you yell at the kid and then you just leave it and the kid will be scared and it will cry and you just leave it there or the kid get hit by a car or something, and you just leave it. Then the trauma will manifest. Something bad really happen, and the feeling will manifest. But if something bad happened to your kid, and you go, oh shit, and you go to the kid, and you hold around your kid, and you're like, comforting him and, or her, and you say, like, I'm here for you. This is going to be all right. Or if you were the one that did something, like, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that, you know, then it will be okay. Mm. But what happened to me a lot of times as a kid was that a lot of bad shit happened. Nobody did comfort me. Mm. And then it just stuck. Mm. You know, wow. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's yeah, deep. That's <laughs> deep. But you know, one thing that's pretty interesting about that is that, uh, you know, like, uh, is that the trauma manifests itself physically inside of our bodies. You know what I mean? Like that, like that feeling in the yeah. stomach like that because you know I, I went to this like ayahuasca retreat you know where people yeah. take ayahuasca and like they kind of purge it's yeah, sort of yeah. like this therapy thing and then what often happens is like people feel like they throw up this trauma like it's something in their rib mm -hmm. or in their stomach and they just mm -hmm. gotta ugh, they puke and puke and puke I know, I know. and they get it all out and then afterwards they feel like oh I, I, I cleanse that. And there's obviously there's a lot of like uh, psychological work happening and stuff like that. But that feeling of the physical release, yeah. the physical expulsion of that trauma yeah. is something that is like really, really, really common and something that I don't think that we necessarily acknowledge about ourselves, even when we're trying to scan our traumatic experiences and mm -hmm. make sense of that in that present day mm -hmm. uh, situation. Yeah, but it's it's it's. I mean, are you? I I I can relate, but I haven't done uh, ayahuasca, but ayahuasca, but you can do it without as well. It, of course. So yeah. so I think it's about facing whatever. It's it's a lot of stuff in us if we had bad experiences, and it's about facing them. We mm. cannot we cannot just run through life and. Because that's what I did in my young 20s. I was just pushing everything away. I didn't mm. know I did it, but I was just hunting new experience, hunting new things. I did more and more and more, and I worked more and more and more, and suddenly you just hit the wall so bad. But I had this experience with confronting my dad. This is really personal, but I was confronting my dad with something. And I had a friend that is my life coach. He said, like, you need to confront your dad with this. It's like something that happened when I was young. And he said, like, you have to, you have to do this. And I was like, <laughs> I will never do that. One year later, uh, I still haven't done it, but I had decided to do it. it. Took me one year. And it's not about, it's not about his reaction. It's not about him understanding or him changing what happened or anything. It's about 
um, accepting what happened and um, and acknowledging it, as le- like letting letting it out, like putting a light on it in some way. Mm. But I had that experience experience after, but because after I lifted my heart and was open about something his reaction doesn't matter mm. like i have no control over his reaction mm. but i did what i had to do for me and by putting that out afterwards i was crying so bad mm. i was just lying on the floor and i cried so hard it felt i was throwing up something mm. it felt like i was throwing up uh, something when i was crying and that's the only way i have uh, tried to describe it uh, later on it felt like I was throwing up, mm. like you told about this ayahuasca now. Mm. And um, after I did that, all fine. Mm. That problem that was haunting me in a way was all gone. Mm. No problem anymore. Mm. No problem with my dad about it, anything. It w- I just needed to acknowledge the feeling that was built inside of me somewhere. Yeah. So, yeah. It is interesting. It's interesting the physical manifestation mm. of a past traumatic yes. experience. Yes. And like, uh, man, like it's so fascinating how interconnected like your mind and your spirit and your body like yeah. really are. And when you say like spirit, like people are like, what do you mean by spirit? But there is something about mm. your life force. Yep. There is something about the way that you spend your energy yes. and the direction that you head in that can get totally yeah. affected yeah. by uh, a, a traumatic experience that you, you, you've you gone through that is just constantly there. Yeah. It's, n- it's never not there and you, you distract yourself and you tr- you don't always acknowledge it but it's it's always there yeah and you need to do something to make that thing that's not helping you yeah. disappear yeah. and and that's the work and whether that's with like ayahuasca or like cognitive therapy or with confronting somebody like mm. you really owe it to yourself to get rid of that manifestation of trauma that is like lodged inside of your body to get to know yourself like i think the whole point of life is getting to know yourself i think like we we are searching so much out there for doing this or that or achieving this or that but we spend so little time going inwards Mm. and it's a saying the only way out is in yeah and i think that's beautiful because it's so true i think it is too the only way out is in yeah because you can go out there and you can try to get out of something, some pain or something. You can you can drink, you can smoke, you can have sex, you can do so much thing to just forget about it, to have the time pass, pass, pass. But when do you sit down and just be quiet and listen to what the fuck happens inside of you? Mm. Have you been to Vipassana? No. Okay, I will challenge you to do that once in yeah, a while. Yeah, I, I, I want to do that. Yes. I, I, I got a friend that's doing it now for 10 days. Yeah, I've done it twice. Oh, shit. How long? 10 days wow. each time. And it's heavy shit. And it's it's the most beautiful it's the most beautiful thing. And I said it after. I said, like, to, exp- to try to explain how big it is, it's like it's bigger than giving birth to your child. And people will be like, what? Is that possible? And it's like, yes, because this is like beyond life. Mm. It's like when when in your life are you for 10 days without talking, reading, having a conversation, listening to something, getting any input at all? Never. N- never. 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 Yeah. So you would stay there and you can't read. You don't know the news. <laughs> you know. And you know that the funny thing is when you get in and when the day you get out, it felt like you went in yesterday mm. because you had no input for 10 days. So mm. it felt like it feels like the world has stopped. That nothing happened while you were in there. And while you're in there, it's it can be so painful. If you start to think about the time, it's so painful. The only way to maintain inside there and uh, stay sane <laughs> is to be present. Mm. Like if you start to think like, oh, it's five days left. It's five days left. And the time would be like, ah, oh, it's, it's, it's so hard. But then, then I re- remember this so well, walking outside this house and I was just looking at my feet and the nature and I was like, okay, this is my foot. I'm going to take one step. I'm going to take one step. I'm here. Yes, I'm here right now. And then you started to be in the present moment and then everything's let's go because mm. there is no other moment than the present moment. Mm. 
Like yeah, exactly. That's we, all that exists. Yeah, when yeah. when we met earlier, that's that's gone. Yeah, it's just a memory. Mm. Like this is what happens right now. Mm. Later isn't here. This is it. It's mm. only now. Yeah. And the understanding of the now, it's so huge. Yeah, it is. It's massive. But the main thing with Vipassana, it's like you, you sit still and you meditate for 10 hours a day. Fuck. But when you meditate, you learn something and you learn something about Sankar. I was actually doing the morning show like uh, Good Morning Norway, Good Morning Norge, after I came out of this. And I think people think I sounded so <laughs> fucking crazy <laughs> i think even the in the reporter that was interviewing me she was like what the fuck is wrong with that? you know <laughs> <laughs> and i think it was maybe it was wrong to go on television like i don't know it was two days after i came out or something it was crazy because i was just talking about every, it was so spiritual yeah I, yeah. Uh, yeah i think the people <laughs> they were like what is she talking about oh my god but um uh, when you when you sit there, you learn that you have something called sankara, mm. and and that that is your uh, all the experiences that you had through all your life, like everything that you've gone through, it's inside your body. So when you sit there and you learn this vipassana and you learn this breathing, the scanning, like at one point I could hear the blood running through my heart. Oh my god! Yes. Because Damn. you get so deeply connected and you're, you're scanning your body so deeply inside. So you, you suddenly hear your whole body. Your senses mm. get so strong. Imagine you haven't heard something or you, you, heard some, you have some uh, people guiding you sometimes. But uh, other than that, you have nothing else input. When have you... Your ears, your focus, your senses, it gets so strong, you know? Yeah. And then when you learn, then you learn like, oh my God, I'm so much more than the, what are we doing in the daily life? We're yeah. like, we're throwing away how fantastic we are. We, we are so much more than we know, you know? Like yeah. our brain is, it's, it's, it's great, you know? It's, it's so great. We can do so much more than we do with our brain or body and anything. But when you're scanning your body, you will feel these experiences and you will never name it. You will never start to question why you feel what you did. But I at one time, okay, so it's like you're scanning and you, you feel the pain and the pain is the Sankara. And when you scan and you focus on that area, it will release from your body. So it's like, uh, it's like about cleansing from uh, your old experiences without naming it or knowing what it is. And the worst thing I did, I had uh, for a couple of days, it felt like I had an axe, an axe into my back, like a big axe in my back. Like it was so painful. It was so hard to just sit there with that big, big pain in my back and was scanning my body. And I was like, oh my God, I wonder if maybe I was in another life killed by an axe in my back or something because it was so painful. It's so, and it's so weird to talk about, but that's what it felt like. It felt like something was like stabbing me in my back. And um, yeah, as you, as you go through the scanning, scanning process again and again and again, and suddenly this big pain that you experience, it releases. Huh. It's really, really weird. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> That's a trippy experience. And it, did you do that in Norway? No, I did in Sweden. Both times in Sweden. Okay. Wow. But what a journey. It's it's a heavy journey. Oh, I can imagine. And you did it twice. I did it twice and I want to do it again. I want to do it once a year. But then I oh, have wow. been stopped by COVID. But yeah, it's it's a big, big uh, experience. And if you do Vipassana, I think you always should do it at the Dhamma retreat. Yeah. I see uh, other places that are copying it or doing their own versions of it. Yeah. But I think the I think the most ethic or original way to do it is at the Dhamma retreat with yeah. Vipassana. It's like you have this videotape of this old old guy that died for a long time ago that started this retreat yeah. and he speaks and you can see him speak and and in the process of 10 days the guiding always know where you are yeah it's like the you hear over the sound um what is it called like the sounds like yeah. speakers yeah the speakers yeah. Are telling you where you are in the process and they're always on point it's always like now you're going to this today and it's like oh, 
fuck, how would you say no? I'm going through, you know? Mm. So it's so specific, this 10 days, what it does with your body. Yeah. Damn. Wow. Sounds like you've been through a fucking a lot there. <laughs> that was deep too. Yeah. <laughs> this is a deep podcast. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the light. It's the crystals. <laughs> yes, yeah, the crystals. Holy shit. You know what? Uh, I'm going to say, uh, I gotta. we're going to wrap it up because the yeah. cameras are about to turn off. But I just want to say it was... <laughs> It was, it was really nice talking to you and I've never talked to you like this before I, even though I've known you for like 13 years and I you know we what I mean we could never talk like this 13 years ago no of course not I didn't exist in this way no like I hadn't had this experience no so, so me either by the way yeah. me either like we, we were just assholes back then we were, <laughs> yeah <laughs> we were just exactly. running around yeah like, getting free we drinks <laughs> yeah <laughs> thinking we knew anything about anything like we, we didn't, didn't know, know shit, shit. <laughs> yeah. we didn't know shit but I'm really I'm really glad that you came on thank you for being a guest oh, thank, thank you, you so much thank you for having me thank you so much yeah I really enjoyed this conversation me too yeah that's good all right, ladies and gentlemen, take care. Bye. Mwah.